Hey, our good friend Mike Jenkins here joining us in studio right now is we're talking the world of bankruptcy and one of the things uh, that's a lot of people one of the first things that come to mind Mike is when people say oh, I need to file bankruptcy but what's gonna happen to my house that is a big question yeah um, so we've talked before about you get to protect certain things when you file bankruptcy mm -hmm. And so your house is like the big thing you get to protect. And so it's given this classification that we call it's exempt or protected, meaning that the bankruptcy court isn't going to take it away and try to sell it to pay your debts with the house. Now is that in all cases or is that a generality? That's a general, that's the general rule and there's a big exception to the rule which I'm gonna to get to in a moment. Um, when we say you get to keep your house, um, what that means is you still have to pay your mortgage payment, so uh, there's no free houses, otherwise I think we'd have a lot more bankruptcy filings <laughs> if you get a free house right. in the deal. That's true. Right. And the other thing that's important is there's other mortgages people have sometimes. They'll have a home equity line of credit or just a second mortgage or uh, just a home equity loan. Well, those have to be paid too, and those often will be ten or fifteen thousand dollars or twenty. And you can't just go out, as long as I keep paying my first mortgage, everything's cool, I can forget about this other mortgage. Um, even though they're lesser in, in, in its balance, they have the same rights that the first mortgage it has if you don't pay, and they can take your house away, bankruptcy or no bankruptcy. So you still got to pay it. Now, there's a really big exception to this general rule that we get to keep our homes in bankruptcy, and that is um, if you have debts when you're filing your bankruptcy and you had those debts before you bought the home, that isn't good because okay. when you file, as to those debts, your home isn't protected. So if you had the debts before you, you bought, had the the debts before you bought the house. It, it, okay. The legal terms that are used are antecedent debt or debts that existed before getting the house. Okay. What happens then is if you had a lot of equity in your home, the trustee could require that you either pay the value of those debts or in a negotiated amount. And that money would then be, it's odd how it goes, but it would be spread to all the creditors or the trustee could sell the house. So if a person had fifty or sixty thousand dollars of equity between the value and their mortgage debt, um, and they had ten or fifteen thousand dollars of debt that existed before getting that house, um, they would have a problem. And so the trustee, they may have to pay some money to keep the house, and that's not a real good situation. Fortunately, we don't really see that that often. Um, I don't really have very many people coming to see me that have lots of equity in their home but from time to time we do, and that's a big exception. Now, with credit cards, people think, well, I've had these credit cards for 10 years, and I've only had my house for five years, and so people think, oh, well, I'm in trouble. And it's not just the fact you had these credit cards. I mean, if you have credit cards and no balances, they're just pieces of plastic. Mm -hmm. And so what's important is when you made the charges on those credit cards, did you make most of the charges that represent the balances when you're filing your bankruptcy after you bought the house? Or did you have most of that before? I see. Okay. So it's that date you purchased the house yes. that is really you have to pay attention to. So if you had a $10,000 master charge when you bought the house and three or four years later you file bankruptcy and maybe you put $20,000 down payment on the house, you've got some equity there. and. When you're making your payments on your credit cards, it's always the payments are being applied to the oldest charges. Right. So if you didn't have a big balance, those are being paid down, and for most people, those small balances wouldn't be in existence when you file for bankruptcy. But it's the big balances, if you had a really big balance and stopped using the card and just have been making minimum payments for several years, you could still have that balance. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, people do balance transfers too. So if you've used another credit card to pay down a card to get a lower interest rate, so that's zero now. So even though you may have had that big balance before you filed, now it's on another credit card if you did it after you filed your, uh, or bought your house. So. People that shift those balances around, which is a common practice, can make those go away too. So that would that would help you then. Well, that would have eliminated the, the debt that existed balance. before. Okay. okay. So now that was the exception to when we file the bankruptcy. Now there's an exception to that exception. So. <clears throat> 
some people have had more than one house uh, before they file a bankruptcy. It's, I think it's fairly common that a every six years, people that have a house sell it and get another house. I think I read that someplace. And so if you bought your house back in the year 2000, had it for maybe six or seven years, built up some equity, maybe the house went up in value, and you sold it and got twenty or $25,000 from that and paid it as a down payment on the house you have when you file bankruptcy, then we go back to when you first started having a home. Uh, it's called your homestead. And so we don't look at the debt that existed before your current home. We would go back to, let's say, the year 2000 in this example, and as long as none of the debts existed before buying that first home, you're cool. I mean, everything's okay. Um, but you have to have some equity. So some people sell a house, they're lucky to break even, and then they get this other house, and if they've got equity now because they've had it for a few years, that isn't going to be protected because they didn't roll any equity from the first one. So it's a kind of a complicated mess, actually. You think? And, and, there, and there's a lot of cases interpreting it, Ooh. and there's actually a difference of opinion from the bankruptcy judges in the Southern District of Iowa as opposed to the bankruptcy judges that are in the Northern District no of way. Iowa. And so sometimes, in, at least in Iowa, it depends where you actually file your case and what the outcome will be on that issue. Issue. Well, it's good to have that, a lawyer that we, knows That's why all we're the calling info. you, Mike. That's what, because you know what these things are all about. And if people have questions about this, if people are just confused, as a lot of people are in these situations, don't do it alone. Don't go about right. it alone. Get a hold of Mike again. Uh, info at iowabankruptcylaw.com. Iowa-bankruptcylaw.com. And your phone number, Mike. Two five five one eight five five. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Eight